I'm pretty excited about this. I hope you like it too. I ordered a new calculator here and I'll get into a little more of what that involved or entailed. This is a TI-30X Pro math print and it is a really great calculator. What I'm not sure about is if it's a great value. Um, and the reason I'm a little puzzled on that, and here's my trusty old TI-36X Pro. The reason I'm puzzled on whether or not this is a good value is I had to order it from the UK and so it cost around $45 to get it to the United States and you can't get this guy over here in the US. This is what we get. It's a little disappointing because Texas, it was a country before it joined the United States, but it is now a part of the United States and Texas Instruments is from Texas and yet they don't sell the better calculator here. That might be because if they did sell it here the price tag would be too high it might be because they had a whole lot of these plastic mold molded parts that they needed to use up. I don't know. But the bottom line is this thing's awesome. This thing's still good, but is definitely inferior to this calculator here. I'm going to show you why. In fact, if I could get this in the US for a price comparable to the Casio FX991EX, class whiz, I would prefer this one. First of all, the buttons and the build quality. This calculator has a better feel, not huge difference, but better than the, the 36X. Um, nice feel to the buttons and a uh, very similar layout. The, I do think the cursor control here, the D-pad the works just a little bit better. The 30X is lovely. I like the color scheme. It's cool looking. So let's get into it here. First thing you're going to notice, or one of the first things you'll notice, is if you um, type on this, the resolution on the TI-30X is much better than on the 36X. They're both fine. Uh, also, you notice this has the black LCD and this has a bluish tint to it. I definitely prefer this. Higher resolution plus I like the black. It looks better. Let's start with a speed test. Okay, we got the same answer on both, but you notice that the TI-30X is noticeably quicker. So it evidently has an improved processor as well. Let's do another test using the solver. It will also demonstrate the speed difference. The first screen we get is, hey, give me a guess. I'm just going to tell it zero for both of them. Asks for what variable to solve for. On this one, as soon as I hit enter, it'll start. On this guy, it actually gives you a chance to put in lower and upper bounds. I'm going to leave that alone. It is a few extra steps, but it would also maybe occasionally be helpful. All right, let's look at the speed difference here. Same answer. 30x is much quicker. Actually, I'm just noticing. Also, it includes a little bit additional accuracy. First time I noticed that. There's another advantage. Definitely impressed with this guy. The other good thing about this answer, and it's true on both of these, is that it is giving us an answer that is between 0 and 2 pi. Not every calculator will do that. I made a different video on that. Let's move on and look at the quadratic formula. There's a big improvement made on the 30x here. We're going to go into our poly solver. We're going to go into the quadratic formula. And I'm going to put in the coefficients. 
Oh, I just made one up. So do one. Oops. One. And let's do uh, one. And we'll do three here. Here. Oops. All right. What I really like about the 30x here is it has given an exact answer. And actually, it's imaginary on top of everything else. Notice it's given me negative 1 half plus the square root of 11 over 2 i. This can only approximate the imaginary part. That's very useful. And I could still hit the approximate here and get the, well, the approximate answer. Huge. The, uh, Casio is great at that too, but now that the TI is doing it, I'm getting the advantage of the Casio, plus I still get the beautiful way that TI does the stack, where I can go up and grab previous results and whatnot, which is huge. What happens when we take the square root of a negative? You do need to make sure that the calculator is supporting complex numbers. And I'm going to do the square root of, it's still a shifted function, I don't love that, but... I do like that the negative key is here, incidentally. Casio has it in a weird spot. All right, we hit enter. Okay, what's beautiful about the 30x is, again, an exact answer. I love that. That's a huge improvement. A subtle but important difference between these calculators when it comes to polar to rectangular conversions. I'm gonna do a polar conversion. It hides, I want, this one here, we're going from polar to rectangular, and we're asking for the y component. Again, exact answer. I love it. Approximate answer. Don't love it. Let's go from rectangular to polar, and we're going to look for the angle here. Um, approximate, exact. So nice, five pi over six, I love it. And again, if I want the approximate, I can hit this key here and get it. But that's a beautiful thing. I stumbled onto another subtle but important difference between these calculators. And let me demonstrate that. When we go into the polysolve, and we do, let's do a cube root, or cubic roots, let's find the cubic roots. I've already put in the coefficients I wanted. So I started with 1, 20, 132, and 288. When I hit enter on the 30x, it will just start, because it knows that we have all four numbers that we need. So it's going to town and working. That's nice. This has one extra step to say solve, which obviously we want to do. And then there's a curiosity here where it actually lists the roots in a different order. I'm not sure why, but points to a different algorithm being used. So the 30x is going to list the double root first, and the 36x is putting the single root first. So that's just a curiosity. Now, what's interesting here is, let's say, well, we can go through this. This just gives you a chance to store any of those results you want to. I'm going to solve it again. Let's say that I wanted to change the coefficients. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's leave A as 1. But let's say we wanted B to be 2. When I type 2, notice on the 30x it automatically clears whatever the previous entry was in, and I'm just left with a 2. Whereas on the 36x, I have to be mindful because it leaves any of the extra digits there. So I actually have to hit, um, I could hit delete. Oops, that doesn't work. I guess hit clear. So I hit clear and it gets rid of it. It's even worse if you have triple digits, you know, more of a problem. Let's say we're going to put a 3 in here. Nice. Eh, I never liked that. So you have to be really careful. I know most of you are, but... It's one more thing you can mess up. So good job, TI. Much better. Anyway, you get the point. Another reason to buy the 30X if it ever comes to America and if the price is right. So that's a whirlwind. I'm happy to demonstrate more 
of the differences between these. So if you guys have ideas or things you're curious about, maybe something on the 36X that kind of bugs you and you're curious if they corrected it on the 30X Pro, uh, ask me in the comments. I don't think you'll find much difference. Uh, the menus seem very similar, uh, but as I've pointed out, the results definitely are superior on this guy. The exact, the ability to do exact answers is similar now to the Casio FX991EX. And that's a beautiful thing. And again, I'd pick this one over that Casio if the price was no object. If this thing comes to America and they want to sell it for $40, I would get the Casio for $22 or whatever it is. That's the better value. If, on the other hand, this comes out, I don't know what, if Texas Instruments, maybe they'll see this video and say, you know what? That guy's right. We need to do this for America. We owe it to America. Anyway, I don't think that's going to happen. But if they did introduce this in the United States and sold it for somewhere near the price of this, which is in that $20 range, 20, 22, uh, this would be my go-to. Anyway, hope this was useful to you. Look forward to hearing your comments and thoughts. Hope you're all doing well. Later.